That was about a minute, so let's switch directions now. Let's go counterclockwise with the same ankle. It's also really important to understand if you have any TMJ or teeth grinding issues. All right, we are one day away from the crusher. I'm just taking some notes here. I've got my 2019 race pulled up on Strava. I did it on a road bike back then with 32 mil tires and got absolutely destroyed. Tires weren't as much of the problem as the gearing on the bike. The cold crush on the backside of the course is just super steep and I ran out of gas and yeah, I cramped and had to walk a little bit. So I'm just reviewing my race, seeing where I messed up and figuring out how I can improve. All right, so the crusher, it's basically two massive climbs, a little bit of flat, and then a small climb up to the finish at a ski resort. And the thing with this race too is at the top of each climb, you're above 10,000 feet. So it's really easy to do a little too much on the first one and really suffer on the second, and that's exactly what happened to me. All right, so anyways, with this race, um, there's some pros and some cons for me. The pros, I live in Utah. We're still at home right now. The race is only, I think, two and a half hour drive away. Also, I live at altitude, huge advantage. Cons, I'm a little bit heavy for a course of this length of climb, so technically it doesn't suit me as well. I'm naturally suited to like your seven to 20 minute climb, these are basically two hour long ones, so I do, I like the long climbs, I enjoy them. I just uh, naturally not quite as suited for them. And yeah, that's about it for that, I guess. So, so anyways, just filling up the rest of my stem notes here. Gonna tape those to my stem so I know when the important climbs are and how long they are and how long I think they're gonna take, those three things. Once I finish with that, I'm gonna pack a little bit. I've got my little opener ride I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna head down to Beaver, get the bike set up, the number on the bike, and try and get to bed early and get some rest. Get on the road towards Beaver, Utah. All right, folks, we've landed in Beaver. Arrived. Arrived. We drove, didn't fly. Although when you're driving I-15, sometimes it feels like you're flying. <laughs> Met up with some old time friends from Minnesota, Justin and Jenna Reinhardt. Jenna absolutely crushed the first round of the Grand Prix, finishing fifth out of the Grand Prix athletes at Sea Otter. Unbound, she was actually in the lead right away. Um, she didn't know it until Sophia came up to her and told her they thought they were leading. Unfortunately, she had some stomach issues and had to um, pull out of that one, but I'm excited to see how she does tomorrow. Anyways, we are just taking some notes. Cleaned the bike before we came down, so not much to do there. Just gotta loop clean the chain, check all the bolts one more time, make sure everything's good. Gonna do a little bit of stretching, and then try and get to bed as soon as that sun goes down. Yeah, not as much to do tonight without having to make a Google Maps plan for where we're gonna drive to. So I'm gonna meet up with Justin, and we're gonna find a couple other spots that aren't on the course, um, just cause you're not allowed on it at all. But we're gonna find some spots to kinda see them go by and then head back up to the finish. 
Yes, this course, there is no feeding allowed um, other than at the aid stations where you can get stuff, but you cannot have people drive to the aid stations to give you stuff. So I'm all on my own. I'm going to start with three bottles. Um, don't really want to carry a pack up. I really don't even want to carry the extra bottle up this first climb because it is tough. However, coming into that first aid station for all the people that only carried two bottles, they're going to need to fill up there and I think quite a few people might do that. And I'm just worried about coming into there with a group, having to wait in line. I'm going to skip that one and then I believe there's a secret one. Or not a secret, but an unofficial aid station at the top of the Sarlacc pit climb but then also at the end of the Sarlacc pit right before the coal. So that's probably where I'm gonna fill up the first time. And then probably just go with one bottle there and then at the top of the coal I'll grab one to two bottles. Um, Cause then it's just kind of rollers to the finish. Well, I think that's all I got for you guys tonight. So sign off, see you on race day morning, unless you got anything to add. Nope. Nope, okay. Ready to rock and roll? See you race day morning. All right, so getting on the trail runners today. Um, just because I've learned from experience crewing that my mornings usually involve some running. So you just, you always gotta be ready to just go. Of these in each of my outside pockets. Bottle, scratch in the middle. Two things super feel, scratch in the bottles. And I'll fill up two to three bottles more. Here we are, about eight miles into the race. Um, it's been a bit spicier than normal. Usually, it's pretty chill until we take the first ride at about mile nine. Uh, but this year, some tacks went up, some uh, pretty heavy hitters were up the road and kind of had to get a little bit spicy. Therefore, we have caught the women's group, which started about five minutes before us. And it's making for an interesting little pack dynamic here. I was actually right behind Sophia for a little bit and there is some beef going on between her and Lauren with regards to the center line rule. Um, but I don't wanna get too into that. So we'll just keep on focusing on the men's race here as we are nearing the first right turn. Things really start to ramp up in power. And as we take this turn onto the main climb, this is where the race really starts. So here we go. part where I tell you that of course I went out a bit too hard in the first road section of this climb um, averaging about 385 watts with a normalized power 394 for the first five minutes and 40 seconds until we hit gravel um, I knew it was a little too much but trying not to fall back too far in the group saw Dylan Johnson kind of go by as he did the pacing strategy that I probably should have followed kicking it back a little bit easier in the beginning um, but yeah, he, he came and went. 
When we look at the overall climb of this first section here, I would fall down to a 334 watt average. Um, so yeah, definitely too hard in the beginning. If we look at the entirety of the first climb, including a few of those roller sections, I averaged 302 watts for an hour and five minutes with a normalized power of 318 watts. But you gotta remember, this was starting at 7,000 feet and ending at 10,000 feet on this first climb, so power is way lower than what you can do or even what I can do at home in Salt Lake City at 5,000 feet. But anyways, kind of found my group on the road with Carter Anderson, Taylor Ledeen, and a few other guys, not sure who they were or what their names were, um, as we rolled through the first aid station at the top of the hill. And we cruised some turns together as we went through the rollers at the top, heading towards the coal. We did hit a bit of a rough section, um, just slightly downhill and slightly uphill. And I was bouncing around a bit and kind of really feeling like I was too far on the limit. So I did fall off that group, which I'm kicking myself a little because had I hung on just a bit longer, I definitely would have been with them on the way down and into the valley. However, just made my way towards the coal on my own. Bottom of the coal, I was gapped off a couple riders, not too far though, and I put in a good effort to catch them. Glad I did, as once I caught on, we started rolling, caught a few more riders, and formed a pretty good group. Coming into town, not a single person stopped at the first aid station to fill up bottles, so I was definitely glad I brought the extra one, as that would not have been fun to miss this train. And then the goal throughout this valley was just to keep a cap on the power. Coming into Circleville, there were actually a few people on the side of the road handing out uh, just plastic water bottles. Not sure if that was supposed to be there or not, but I gladly took one. This would mean I wouldn't have to stop at the unofficial aid station and could make it all the way to the end of the Sarlacc pit. goal through the Sarlacc pit and up to coal for myself I had set at 300 watts and I'd say I did pretty good looking at this first part going up the Sarlacc pit took me 14 minutes with an average power of 307 watts so just a little bit over and then getting into the coal to crush climb the uh, main section of it took me 45 minutes at 289 watts so fell down a little bit there on my average but as you're going up in altitude the power is going to fade a little bit so I'd say I paced that pretty well to what I thought I could do. Do you 
hear that mix? Perfect, thank you. You guys have a great day. This final last kick up to the ski resort took me seven minutes and 29 seconds at an average of 312 watts. So, I mean, you're finishing at 10,300 feet, kind of everything I had left just to get to the finish. And yeah, came in, I think I was 49th place. So not gonna lie, super bummed on this result. Obviously I knew going into it, it wasn't quite a perfect race for me. Um, with my build, but man, 49th place does sting a bit. So work a little too hard to be satisfied with just mid pack in the pro race. I think there's 80 some racers in the pro race. So uh, we're gonna go back to the drawing board, try and move up a bit in the next one. Sorry about the uh, disappointing finish here, but hope you guys enjoyed the video and the views and the race. And uh, yeah, we live to fight another day and definitely not gonna stop here. So thanks again for watching. <laughs>